Hello and welcome to the Monday, August 13th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We've got a number of stories from DEF CON and Black Hat to talk about today. The first one I think is really interesting because it took so long for this story to actually make the news. What this is about is a coprocessor that came with via C3 processors. Now these processors were sold around 2000 so pretty much out of date now. They may still sitting around in embedded hardware but for the most part not really all that relevant. This backdoor was actually documented so I hate calling it a backdoor. It was in the data sheet. But then again, who reads data sheets? The problem here is that userland software was able to execute code using that coprocessor and affecting memory that was privileged. So really nifty privilege escalation built into the CPU. Again, this was documented, if so, not very well. An intention of this coprocessor was to allow the software to execute extended instruction sets that were not part of the standard x86 instruction set that these VIA processors were supposed to implement. Second story is a vulnerability in Apple's mobile device management system, in particular as it comes to OS X. When you, for the first time, boot a Mac, it will reach out to Apple to check if the serial number of your Mac was registered with a mobile device management system. Now, companies do that in order to, for example, download standard configurations and software to these devices. Now, the initial setup was done quite well. Apple did implement certificate pinning, so this essentially prevents a man in the middle from affecting this process. However, when the actual manifest of software is downloaded, no certificate pinning is in place. So it's still using TLS, but a man in the middle could inject data and the bad certificate would be accepted. This has been fixed in Apple's latest updates. So if you are running OS 10.13.6, then you should no longer be vulnerable. And again, this only affects you when you boot up your system for the very first time after taking it out of the box. And that hacker needs to have a man in middle position to then inject the malicious manifest at that time. But our handlers kept busy as well over the weekend. Didi has an interesting diary explaining how to peek inside email message files. These are the Windows style message files. So essentially how to analyze them and check them for matter. Remco is looking at the JA3 library. I think I discussed it before on this podcast, but it's certainly worth another look. JA3 is a library that was developed by Salesforce and essentially fingerprints SL clients. Really helpful to look for malware or other unapproved rogue TLS clients. And researchers from Positive Technologies did look at a number of different mobile credit card terminals. Now, uh, these are typically small handheld devices. They have a keypad, they have a little display, and then some facility to either read the chip on the card, or in some cases, they support NFSC. But most of the work is actually done by a mobile device like a tablet, which is provided by the merchant. So the real problem here is how much of the work is done by this handheld credit card terminal and how much of the work is done by the tablet. One flaw the researchers discovered was that it is possible for a malicious tablet to display arbitrary text on the little handheld terminal. What this means is that the customer may see a different amount on the terminal than they're actually being charged. Two of the devices were also vulnerable to arbitrary code execution, which then of course could be used to, for example, read pins that the user enters on the keypad. 
But one nice security feature that I think appears to be implemented correctly here is that all the encryption work as far as the credit cards go is done in the little handheld terminal. So the tablet never sees a clear text credit card number, unless of course in the remote code execution case where the handheld device itself is being compromised. All the flaws being discovered have been addressed by respective vendors. Well, and then one follow-up and one correction to last week. First, the follow-up RFC 8446, that's TLS 1.3. It's now official and made public. Last week, I mentioned that it was about to be made public. Secondly, a correction. I mentioned an attack against implantable insulin pumps. Well, the models affected here were actually not the implantable type. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.